Demon Slayer Season 4 started airing a few days ago at the time of this recording. And to be honest, I can't wait for the rest of the season to come out. Uh, it's no secret that I'm a big fan of the Demon Slayer series. And I've made previous videos of like calculating the strength of different characters from different TV shows. And I want to give Tanjiro that same experience. So that's exactly what we're going to do today. Today, I want to find a definitive answer to how strong the Demon Slayer Tanjiro Kamado is. Of course, there will be spoilers ahead, so for those of you who care, get out of here. For those of you who don't, I hope you enjoy. While you're here, you should definitely like and subscribe. Anyways, let's begin. Let's start where we always start, the strength section. And see, finding the strength in Demon Slayer is actually way more difficult than I anticipated. And this is for mainly two reasons. One is that there's no really large display of power like there is in Dragon Ball or in Naruto where they just blow shit up. Uh, and second is that it's more close combat oriented, which means any strike thrown is definitely hit on, and lands only on the opponent, which means to find out how strong the attack is, you need to know how strong the character is, and we run into a circular reasoning error there. Fortunately for me, there are a couple scenes in which a large area is devastated by some attacks. The two scenes in mind that I have are when Gyutaro destroyed a large section of the entertainment district in the middle of the fight with Tengen and Tanjiro. Uh, and the second thing I can think of is Muzan uh, in the manga where he unleashes like a fuckload of tentacles or whatever the fuck and just destroys a large area with them. For this scaling, we are going to use the Gyutaro scene, and this is mainly because there's more information in, within that since it's been animated, while the Muzan thing, it's only shown within a panel in the manga, so there's a lot of questions left to be had. Also, for those of you who are wondering if Tanjiro's power even scales to that of Gyutaro's power, rest assured that it does, because later in the series, Tanjiro was able to match with Akaza, an upper rank 3 demon, while Gyutaro is only an upper rank 6. Finding the actual power behind Gyutaro's attack itself is also very difficult because while he does destroy the buildings like we see in this shot here, it's clear that it's not a blast that just destroys the entire like area. There are more decisive cuts that destroy the stability of the buildings which cause them to collapse. So we need to keep all of that in mind in order to calculate the strength of Gyutaro to impose upon Tanjiro. We can see that he destroys further than the eye can see within these shots here. So let us assume a nice estimate that he destroyed uh, in an area of about 100 acres, which is over 400,000 meters squared. And we'll assume only half that area is allocated to uh, the area for buildings and the other half is allocated to roads and whatnot. So that is about 50 acres actually destroyed or a little over 200,000 meters squared. A small building or a house has about a square footage, or in this case, an area of 100 meters squared. Uh, this means if we divide the total area uh, allocated for the houses divided by the actual area of the houses themselves, that gives a little over 2,000 buildings which had to be destroyed. Now we need to find out how many cuts it took to destroy the buildings themselves. Looking at this photo here, we can see that it takes on average about three cuts to destroy one building. So multiplying that by the total number of buildings, we get over 6,000 total cuts. Now we need to find the force of each cut. And this one is also difficult. So we need to find out what the materials these buildings are mainly made out of. So we know what sheer strength it took to cut through these materials. Uh, we can see in these photos that it is mainly made out of wood. So we're going to assume a, a wood composition mainly. Uh, we are actually going to use the highest sheer strength value that I'm able to find for wood. And this is because even early, really early in the series, we've seen Tanjiro able to cut through boulders. So we can assume that this is the higher echelon of force that, <laughs> that is required to cut through these. Uh, so looking through the data of different types of wood, I see the woods with the highest ultimate shear stress is about 17 megapascals. But we don't only need pressure, we also need the area in order to find the force. 
Uh, unfortunately, we don't know how big each cut one of Gyotaro slashes are, so we're just going to use the average area of a sword blade, which is about 0 0.004 meters squared. Now we have everything we need to find the force of a single cut. We have the 17 megapascals of pressure for the ultimate shear stress times the area of an average sword, 0 0.004 meters. And that gives us the force of a single cut to be about 72,000 newtons. But remember, this is only a single cut when with one attack, Gutero made over 6,000 of these. So we multiply this force times the 6,000 cuts he made, which gives us a total force of 436 million newtons of force. If we assume each cut or each force only propagates for one meter, that gives a total energy of 436 million joules of energy. Of course, since we are relating this to Tanjiro and Tanjiro is relative, Tanjiro himself can exert this 436 million newtons of force or 436 million joules of energy. Unfortunately, we won't be able to find the speed of Tanjiro as concretely as we found the strength of Tanjiro. And this is for its own plethora of reasons. One is that there's no real statements for how fast they're going, like how we got Maki was able to move at Mach 3. But there's nothing really in the series that they move relative to, like bullets or they don't show a large gap in which they cross and how much time it takes to cross it in real time so we are going to need to make an average and to do this i want to find the lower limit of the speeds we know they can move at and the upper limit of the speeds we know that they can move at and then find the average of those values for the lower limit it's very simple we know that these characters are faster than the speed of sound uh tanjiro was able to fight the drum demon and dodge the drum attacks and Tengen was even shown breaking the sound barrier in his fight with Yutaro, so we'll use that as the lower limit. And for the upper limit, we're going to overestimate here a bit. I'm going to say that their upper limit is the speed of the lightning leader. Uh, I don't think that they can actually move at this speed since many times demons actually do use lightning or electricity as a, an attack. And it really does pose a problem for, our, for the demon slayers. Uh, but we're just going to use that as the upper limit as... They might not reach it, but let's say they get close. So that's going to be their upper limit. So taking the lower limit of the 343 meters per second, which is the speed of sound, and the upper limit of the lightning leader to be about 89,000 meters per second, taking the average of those values, we get an average speed of about 45,000 meters per second. So we'll assume that Tanjiro himself has not only a running speed, but also a general movement and fighting speed of 45,000 meters per second. Fortunately, finding the acceleration is so much easier than finding the strength or the velocity, and that's thanks to our boy Akaza. See, Akaza has a special move where he punches the air so fast, it causes compression waves and a shock wave, which shoots out at a distance like a projectile. Uh, fortunately for us, since Akaza is relative to Tanjiro, since we've seen them fight, and they were pretty nicely matched, we can assume that the speed we just calculated for Tanjiro should also nicely apply to Akaza. So we can measure the change in velocity of his punches moving from standstill to what we'll assume to be the max speed he can punch at, as well as the time, the change in time it took for that to occur. So measuring and recording and using a stopwatch and just measuring how fast his punches go out it's about 0.3 seconds so we know the change in velocity over the change in time that gives us an acceleration of 150,000 meters per second squared which is crazy since we know that Tanjiro is relative to Akaza Tanjiro himself should also have these insane accelerations now, durability for Demon Slayers is also hard to find, and this is because Demon Slayers are actually very squishy in terms of their uh, upper rank demon echelons. In fact, they really can't survive many attacks, if any, from their upper rank demon echelons. They either have to block it out or cancel it with their own strikes, they have to redirect it, or they have to hope that they don't get hit anywhere vital, otherwise they would just die. But we can still find a range for Tanjiro's durability. And to find the lower range of this durability, we're actually going to use our boy Akaza again. 
because Akaza has hit a few of the Hashiras and they still did manage to live. So we're going to use that as the, the lower limit. And since we know his acceleration, we just need to find his mass and force equals mass times acceleration. That gives us that force. Now for the upper limit, it's going to be a little bit more nuanced, but we're going to be using Newton's third law. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So whatever Tanjiro is able to output, in this case, the force we calculated for his strength, he should also be able to withstand within his arms to be able to launch that attack in the first place. So let us start with Akaza. We just calculated Akasa's acceleration to be about 150,000 meters per second. And we can easily find his mass by searching it up, which he's actually 74 kilograms. So multiplying that mass times the acceleration gives us a force of 11 million newtons. We already calculated the upper limit earlier, which is 436 million newtons, which means Tanjiro has a range for his durability within 11 million newtons to 436 million newtons of force. If we assume that both of these forces, in case Akaza's punches and the, the 436 million newtons slash that Tanjiro can gen generate only propagates for a meter, that means the energy range for his durability is 11 million joules to 436 million joules of energy. With that, we've come to the end of the video, and I think I did a pretty good job at finding a definitive answer for how strong Tanjiro is, and come to find out he is hella strong. Uh, way stronger than I actually anticipated it to be, but that's really all I have for you today. If you did enjoy, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Maybe even let me know who you want to see next. Uh, otherwise, that's really all I have for you today. Uh, peace out. Have a good day.